Let's continue talking about clustering by talking about a specific clustering algorithm called k-means clustering. And whenever you talk about a clustering algorithm, one of the questions that you have to answer is, how do you figure out what the clusters are? How do you know how many clusters you're going to have? And how do you know whether you have a good answer or not? So let's use that to talk about k-means clustering, one very specific clustering algorithm. So the way that k-means clustering works is very, very simple. So it just assumes that you have k clusters. And so this is an integer k that you give it up front, and you will always find k clusters, and you're going to find k clusters whether that's the right number of clusters or not. This makes your life very simple. And to do this, you need real-value data, and the way that this works is that it's going to find the clusters so that the distance between the cluster center and each of the data points is minimized. And it's going to stop once it can't improve that assignment of points to cluster centers anymore. You first start with k initial clusters, and you'll plop those down somewhere in your data set. And then you're going to look for every point, what is the closest cluster. You'll then assign those points to its closest cluster, and then you're going to recompute the cluster centers to be the average of all of the points that were assigned to it. So this is the explanation in words, but it's much easier to see as an example. So here's an example of data points in two dimensions. All of our examples will be in two dimensions, but Obviously, you can do this in as many dimensions as you want, but it's a lot easier to show pictures in two dimensions. So here are our points. What we're going to do is we're going to start off with the four centers being the four leftmost points. And then each of the data points gets assigned to one of those four centers. But the leftmost center is not going to get any points at all. And as the centers update, the centers get pulled towards the center of the data points that they got assigned to. So if we look at the four rightmost points as the initial centers, you basically get the mirror image. The rightmost point uh, doesn't get uh, any points assigned to it, and then the others move further left, and then you get an update. Uh, and this one point all the way over here uh, doesn't get any love, none of the points gets assigned to it, and all of the other centers uh, get a more reasonable clustering assignment. If you start with the topmost points, uh, the centers move down, and you now get many more iterations of clustering as uh, they refine the centers and get closer and closer to a, a good clustering. If you start with the five bottom points and move up, you get a similar structure, but you're going to end up with this one mega cluster over here that, that gets a lot of the points, and then all of the other clusters are much smaller. What works better is if you assign your points more randomly. So if you assign your points randomly, uh, you're going to get more competition over data points, and even if one cluster starts off with a lot of the points, there will be more competition, and they'll divide up the space in a little bit more reasonable way. But you're going to have more iterations, which is good because there's more competition. So that was an example with pictures. Let's now see an example with numbers. And so here is our data, again laid out in a two-dimensional space. And what we'll do is we'll say that the clusters are initially negative 1, 1, and 0, 0. So now we need to figure out what is the closest center to each of the individual points. And here we're just going to use the Euclidean distance, and we can compute the distance for both the minus 1, minus 1 cluster and the 0, 0 cluster. So here we have all of the distances, and we can highlight uh, the top points are closer to negative 1, negative 1, and the bottom points are closer to 0, 0. So now that we've assigned points to each of the centers, we can compute the new centers. And the way that we do that is we take all the points assigned to one center and average them and do the same thing with the other center. And so once we do that, we get a new mean of minus 1.5, minus 2.1, and a new mean of 1, 
comma 1.2. And then we repeat the process. We have these new centers. We have all of our data points again. We can compute the distance to each of the two new centers. And uh, we now get an assignment. We figure out which center each point is closest to. So now we get new centers and we can then compute the average and we get slightly different results. We again compute the distances, we can see which one is closer, and we compare with the previous assignments, and if they don't change, we're finished. One fun application of k-means is doing what's called image segmentation. And what you can do in image segmentation is you can find parts of the image that look alike. And you may recall this, this famous Obama picture, uh, Hope. You can create pictures like this by doing image segmentation. The way this works is you can view each pixel in this image as being a point in three-dimensional space. And that three-dimensional space encodes its color. And you may have heard about RGB, red, green, blue. You can find any color as a combination of red, green, and blue. And if you do clustering on those, you can get sort of the palette that makes up the image. And so you can find the four most common colors that make up the image. The average of those colors defines the cluster. And then use that to create a new picture that's sort of a stylized version of that picture. K-means has a lot of issues. One of the issues that K-means has is that it can't handle data that look like this. And you can sort of see that there are very two distinct clusters here. Uh, you have sort of the circular cluster down in the bottom, and then you have this sausage-shaped cluster going up. And it would make sense to capture these two distinct clusters in a sensible way. And this is the true clustering here. But what k-means would actually do in this case is cut off the bottom of the sausage and assign that to the circular cluster. And can we find ways to do a clustering that can discover these oddly shaped clusters like this? And that's what we'll talk about next when we talk about Gaussian mixture models.